There are two Streetworks monopoles behind me. One is quite ordinary and the other quite extraordinary. The pole on the right is just a standard run-of-the-mill O2 Ericsson host shared monopole. It's the site on the left that we are interested in because it is an EE Ericsson first of its kind Streetworks. Yep, this left pole is the first EE Ericsson Streetworks in the UK and I got to see the equipment being installed into the cabinets and the pole set up. But first, let's go on an external tour. On the far left is the Western cabinet, which houses EE's Ericsson hardware, which this video is all about. Then to the right of that is the MBNL shared 3G Fredo, which also has combining units in it, followed up by the Samsung cabinet for 3G's 4G services before we finally move on to the back hall and main supply cabinet. But on our internal tour, we will first go over to the Western cabinet because that's what this video is all about. The Western cabinet is very neat and tidy inside and actually does not have maybe quite as much equipment as people might think. At the top are the circuit breakers and beneath them are the baseband. So this site has two baseband in it, a 6620, which is for the 2G on 1800 megahertz. And then below that is the 6630, which is for the 4G services. In this case, 4G 1800 megahertz, dual carrier and 4G 2100 megahertz. Below that, is the alarm system and also a GPS receiver and then what's left below that are the ERS2260 dual band 1800 and 2100 megahertz radios which broadcast EE's 2G and 4G services for this site. The Fredo cabinet was not fully opened up while I was there but it contains the Nokia Flexi equipment for the shared 3G which I've seen much of before. Only the side was opened and you can see a combiner unit at the top alongside some feeders and other power equipment. So this combines the three 4G 1800 megahertz with the shared 3G 2100 megahertz up a single set of feeders. These pictures show the inside of the three Samsung cabinet. So there are two sets of radios in this. Half of them are for 1800 megahertz, which have the red tags, and half for 800 megahertz, which have the green tags. I also got images of the baseband unit, which operates all of the cells of 3, 4G. The services cabinet is split into two segments. The top houses the back hall, and the lower half the main supply equipment. As the main supply equipment is relatively straightforward and not particularly interesting, I will focus on the upper half of this cabinet, which on initial inspection looks incredibly complicated, but when you actually break it down, it's not too bad. The very top of it houses the power supply unit, and then below that is the Virgin Media 1 gigabit per second black hole equipment, which features a Huawei ATN 950B and feeds the 3 4G and MBNL 3G. Below that is the OpenReach 10 gigabit per second equipment. This uses a Huawei ATN 910C and provides the backhaul for the Ericsson equipment, so the 2G and 4G, which we spoke about earlier. As for the pole itself, this got some new radio design 1800 2100 megahertz dual band mastered amplifiers, as well as a GPS antenna which connects up to the GPS receiver in the Ericsson cabinet. EE 4G performance off the site is quite fast, thanks to the three 4G carriers, two on band three and one on band one. This site is also supported as an LTE bearer provider for a inter-site dual connectivity arrangement where the NR bearer comes off an NR capable site. 
Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed having a look inside this brand new equipment and some not quite so brand new hardware as well. Also, thanks to the riggers for carrying out the work and being all right with me floating around for a long period of time, taking pictures from the pavements and just generally kind of observing what they were doing.